minimum standards, the EU context, and how the system will actually operate and then costs. The RI was founded in 1839 and since then has had a major involvement in education and standards. In 1985, as has been said, the Architects Directive was introduced and that sets the minimum standards for formation of architects across the EU and that standard has been used by the RI since 1985. Since 1972, the RA has had a professional practice examination. What that requires is a five-year full-time course in architecture, a minimum of two years postgraduate experience, a completion of an analytic analysis of a building project, a course of 15 days of lectures, and a written and oral examination. And that's the standard. Uh, Brian has talked about the form of the construction industry, which did, in fact, recommend and was accepted by government that the titles architect and surveyor should be registered and the RI should be the registration body with the SCS for surveyors and there should be consultation with those who did not have listed qualifications. In the context of the form of the construction industry, in fact there was considerable consultation with four bodies representing those that did not have qualifications and that was the Architects and Surveyors Institute, the Group of Independent Architects in Ireland, the Corporation Association of Architects and Surveyors and the Irish Architects Society. That led to an agreement which is forwarded to government, it's in your papers at Appendix 2. What you will see there is that agreement with bodies representing those that did not have qualifications is virtually similar to that that's in the Act. The Competition Authority has been mentioned. Yes, the authority did recommend a separate independent body, but also said if the state, by legislation, decided the RAI and the SCS should be the registration bodies, then there should be a majority of non-professionals on the key committees, admissions, conduct and so on. That is in the Act. It is independent. Uh, the Building Control Bill, as you know, was published in 2005 and in 2009, May, the Minister appointed the non-professionals to the Technical Assessment Board and the Admissions Board and that enabled the register to be launched in November. It's important to say the Building Control Act marks a key shift in widening access to the profession by introducing access for those who have not pursued the now standard higher education route. There is a registered admission examination and technical assessment. Up to 1966, entry to the architecture profession could be gained through the RA examination system, but there has been, as you know, a general shift towards formal qualifications. In a sense, the pendulum has slum, swung back to some degree, with a shift towards an outcomes-based assessment and move and not and move in higher education away from the input model. The Building Control Act has both models. In other words, input from qualifications and output based on the assessment of the standards attained without formal education. I'd like to turn to consumer protection. There are many reasons why a demonstration of minimum standards is essential. Consumer protection is the main reason. Having a standard means that consumers can be assured that any person using the title architect has demonstrated a specific level of knowledge, skill and competence that can be judged against that standard if problems occur. A defined standard ensures that those subject to the Code of Conduct and to investigation by the statutory independent professional conduct committee have demonstrated they've attained a, knowledge, skill, a level of knowledge, skill and competence where you can reasonably expect to, to follow the code. Now, you might ask, is this really a problem? Well, the reality is that most members of the public believe the title architect is protected and does mean formal qualifications. <coughs> As late as October 2009, a Red Sea poll found that Oh, less than one-fifth of those surveyed actually knew the title was not protected and the word architect did not mean qualifications. There's a significant consumer information gap in that area. You probably recall the David Grant issue where the title architect was used. He misrepresented the possibility of getting planning permission in this state and consumers lost thousands of euro. He went to the UK, he was stopped using the title legally and he's been fined. Just to look at the EU context then, very quickly. The Professional Qualifications Directive is a minimum standard, and in that directive there are seven sexual professions benefiting from the automatic rights of registration. There are architects, dentists, doctors, midwives, nurses, pharmacists and vets. Automatic recognition means if you have the necessary qualifications, you can't be prevented from establishing. And these sexual professions are listed on the basis of significant public interest and the public health implications of their work. The directive list the qualifications in Article 27 member states. In your papers at Appendix 3, Article 46 is attached, and they are the minimum standards. It's the foundation, it's the underpinning of all standards across Europe. It's very important that any standard for registration of architects is aligned with European minimum standards. If persons are admitted to the register who don't meet those standards, the qualifications of all architects who might seek to migrate or provide service in Europe are going to be questioned. And failure to require minimum use EU standards has a potential to undermine regulation and occupation in this state. So has anybody else done this? Is this an entirely new idea? No. 
Holland in the 1990s went from no regulation to regulation of architects. They carried out an assessment process successfully. The system used is very much the same as the system of the Building Control Act. It's been successful. It hasn't been challenged, because systems like this can be challenged by member states and by the Commission, and that was one of the reasons to do it. So how will it be done? Essentially, it's portfolio-based, 10 years' experience, at least four projects. A separate panel of architects will assess these. They will give an opinion to the statutory independent technical assessment board. That board can accept, reject, it can carry out further interviews and can ask for additional information. There is, then there is an internal appeals board and also appeals to the court. Now, there's a belief apparently that there was a grandfather clause in the Building Control Act and was dropped during the debate stage. In fact, an amendment was introduced only to the definition section where practical training experience was to be replaced by a reference to a grandfather clause. Ultimately, Dick Roach did not accept the amendment, but at no time was the actual system of <coughs> assessment in, in any sense uh, changed or modified. There have been comments about the, the timescale for technical assessment. I've given quite a range of, of examples in the papers in relation to architects with qualifications, EU graduates and so on. The reality is the time taken to process an application from even somebody with automatic uh, qualifications and a technical assistant are about the same. There's no great difficulty. Um, to date, there are 2,850 architects on the register. There's a choice of being an RAM member and going on the register, or going on the register alone. 150 architects have been admitted to the register after the launch, and there's probably 20 or 30 coming each, each month. So far, one architect has opted not to join the RAI, and it's a free choice. The question of costs has been raised. I have to say that that's understandable, but the costs put forward by the RAI are based on a pilot scheme carried out before to assess the actual costs. This is not theoretical. The Minister has to approve the costs, and that is in process. Um, you, the committee will appreciate I can't actually submit to the record the entire material given to the Minister, but in the papers here there is a breakdown of the full cost of technical assessment, and already we're about 500 over the budget we've suggested. The direct cost of the pilot scheme we held to the RI was over 73,000. There was an income of 39,000. 4,000 should have been charged. And if you take in all the layers of administration and so on, you can see where this comes from. It's a very clear matter. The RA's position on costs is open to change. If somebody can show by evidence these are incorrect, they'll be reduced. They'll be reviewed. We're going through cases at the moment. If it's found that these costs are excessive or we can work at a lower rate, that will be done as well. Um, I've also given information on benchmarking, because I think that's important uh, for the committee. To, how can we make, what comparison can we make? There's been an OECD report, OECD report on these processes of recognition of prior learning in Ireland and identified the cost of an exemption for a standard third level module, usually involving five credits. There are 300 credits in, a, in the five year course in architecture at 1,000 to 1,500. There's a linear project uh, funded by the HEA and that identified a cost of 6,000 per application for one module only. Um, I've also given examples of the cost of full-time education in architecture, the Bologna process, postgraduate courses, and I think usefully the kind of charges in the UK by the Architects Registration Board for similar but less complex processes. So in summary we're saying these costs are comparable. They will change if the evidence is there. Turning to financial hardship, everybody knows this hardship in the field of architecture, that's recognised. And there's detail in the papers as well. Some key points. The RAI can't pay for this process. The process was set up on the basis that it was to be self-funding, i.e. paid for by architects. Um, the OEC report has made a strong case for state support for those going through this process. And the RAI itself is prepared to put up the order of €50,000 as, as part of a solidarity fund, provided the states will maybe put up one or 200000 more to deal with those who are suffering general har genuine hardship. So in summary, the RAI is the registration body with the responsibility to the state, to the EU Commission, to the public, to consumers, to architects, and those applying for registration recognise its responsibilities. This is a period of change for those working in the field of architecture, <coughs> and those not without listed qualifications have reasons to have concerns. These are understandable. The system of technical assessment is not a new proposal, formulated as early as 1999 and agreed with many other bodies. There, it was in the 2005 Building Control Act. I've given the example of the successful Netherlands system. 
So far around the country we've had six briefing sessions on the system attended by over 200 potential applicants. We've prepared standardised documentation, CV forms, verification forms to make it as easy as possible to make your application. And I have here uh, a, a sample of a successful application that the deputies are very welcome to examine and it shows the extent of the application. This is not formidable, it's not excessive. Now there are no guarantees that everyone will be successful but this does not prevent a person offering architectural services in the future but they may not use the title. And a balance has to be struck between consumer protection, the requirements for compliance with minimum EU standards, and access to the register by having fair, reasonable and open systems for assessment for all. It can be understood that the concerns being, with the concerns being expressed, it's possible that the real opportunities that are offered by the Building Control Act may not be appreciated. The Act will provide open, transparent mechanisms for those who don't have listed qualifications. Rather than closing up the market, registration will open up the market at all levels and at all levels of practice. It will provide one standard for architects in Ireland, provide access for those who didn't have listed qualifications to employment as architects in the state sector, <coughs> provide access to employment as architects for state-funded building projects, access to the equivalent of a level 9 master's qualification, which for teaching can be very, very useful in terms of income, provides access to the EU market through automatic rights of recognition, and provides access to full professional recognition. With one minimum standard for all architects, everybody's working in the same environment and competing on the same level. But finally, the registration of architects has not been set up for the benefit of architects, but for the benefit of the consumer and the quality of the built environment. It's not intended to exclude anybody but rather include all those who meet a defined minimum standard. But registration must not place the position of architects who need to migrate or provide services in the EU at risk by the admission of persons who have not been assessed to a defined EU minimum standard. There's a potential to undermine existing regulation systems and future systems to come. There has to be minimum standards and defined minimum standards of assessment to protect the consumer and the national and EU credibility of the register. Thank you. Uh, take question, Deputy Phil Hogan. Uh, Chairman, uh, I wish to thank the uh, 